so this should be working now, hopefully, with all with all good good intent. Should it work? Should. Anyways, this is Joseph. And Jeremy. And uh, we're basically playing a childhood game that I have not... I don't think I ever beat it, because like I was a kid when it came out. It was a difficult game. This game came out when I was born, back in 93. Um, it was the best-selling game of the 20th century, mm -hmm. as far as video games are concerned. Yeah. Risk probably outsold it. Yeah, Risk was massive in the 20th century. But this is the best-selling video game. It wasn't sold better until... I think it was Sims in like 2002 or something was the first time it was that ever actually sense. outsold Sims as a video game. Yeah. Even what's really crazy is its sequel, Riven, didn't even didn't even outsell it. No. Most and people didn't even play Riven. Riven is actually better than this game. Riven is the only one I have. You've actually beaten Riven? Yes. Oh. Do you want to go ahead and refill mine too? Yep. While we're starting this up. Product placement, Fanta, pay me money, please. Good stuff. Yeah. Let's bring over the European stuff. We get we get no love out here in Europe in the uh, non-European lands. In, in the in the boons of Idaho. In the boons of Idaho. Yeah. All right. So I might be a little bit louder than Joe at times because I'm closer to the microphone. But hopefully this is going to work well. Hopefully. But Joseph, go ahead and click the new game, and we'll watch through cinematic in the beginning and be quiet. Also, for flashlight, I figured it out. You press F and it turns on your flashlight. We have to be outside of it, so go ahead and press the play button. Uh, bottom right. Oh, there you are. Yeah. I, I feel like they designed this almost for a mobile game and then ported to PC. Probably. Um, so, yeah. This is how you start in Mist. Hey, it sunk ship. What's really crazy is this is probably the first game that most people even had for their uh, personal computers back when it came out. That is true. It wasn't the first for us, but that's just because my brother was an avid computer geek and computer gamer when, like, computers were new. And just pressing the button. That was kind of cool. And that's all it does. Oh. <laughs> so what's that to the side? It's a note thing. Settings, dimensional imager, topographical, obscuring, and 
map of the island I'm on. Yeah. Cool. Do you know why they have it on an island? Because that way you can't go too far. Exactly. The, it was all on CD and they needed something really limited so they wouldn't load the I still have the original. Oh, really? Yeah, it does work. Well, no, you need the classic stuff. So there's your notepad for when you need to take notes on something. Because okay. you will need that. Yeah, that, that's nice. That's any cyan game. Unless you're playing like Manhole or something like that, then you might not need a. What the heck is that? Uh, that is a marker switch. Apparently, that's important. Because if you look over on the paper. Yeah, it tells you what they are. Yeah. <laughs> it's a marker, marker switch. switch diagram. So that's a diagram of a marker switch. So that's obviously something important. Yeah. And if you want to get the turbulent pool water, you can put it back to 67. If you want to have like that space screensaver <laughs> screen thing. Saver. All right, let's go explore our little island. Hello, sunken ship. Goodbye, sunken ship. Hey, that looks like the thingy. Yeah. Like I said, I feel like this was made for mobile and ported over. Like those drag controls. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like it was designed for an iPad. They need something to make sure you didn't accidentally do it on or off. Oh, the climbing is fun. I'm just gonna turn the other one off. The old version didn't even have the walk animation. They would just put you through different screens with like I think like a, a yeah. light transition would or just, something like that. You would just really pretty transition, and then you would see it from a different angle. Yeah, which worked for back in the day. But because yeah, you kind of knew what you were, you you guessed it that way. Yeah. What was really crazy is you you actually had to um, play this game on like a one or two speed CD ROM. You missed the paper. Catherine, I've left for you a message of utmost importance in our fore chamber beside the dock. Enter the number of mark switches on this island into the imager to retrieve the message. Yours, Atrus. At Atrus. 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 Okay, so far I've seen two. Marker switches. I'm gonna use um hash. It's hash your notes, switch. not mine. You have to justify yourself. I am justifying my scribblings to people who <laughs> can't even see my scribblings. All right. So is there one to your right? Yep. There's one there. So that's, that's three. three. Another hatch. Hey, what's in here? Oh yeah, I'm gonna turn them all on. That chair looks totally terrifying. You want to go visit the dentist? Not really. I'm gonna like, ooh. January 1st, 01. No, this is important, I'm writing it down. So there's the library. If you look up, you see clouds. That was slightly long. You can also press escape from the main menu because of reasons. Okay, the tower rotation. So this is basically the map. I'm going to PM, RAM, 9 PM. Let's see what I know what that is.
So that again is one of those copies of those missed books, but that one they didn't scribble miss on the front, they just... Oh hey, door open. So that picture has the ability to make things appear as they are in that picture. Unfortunately, by you putting up the that bookcase, you're now trapped in there. Trapped in here. Oh. So he wants blue pages. Mm -hmm. And the brother who's in the red book wants red pages. You can now access the library and also go outside. Ooh, yay. Back in the day, the reason why they had those paintings there was because it was easier to do a, like a blur effect than it was to actually make the, you know, like the bookcases go up and down. As far as animation is concerned. Oh, there's this there's another one. Yep. Four. And then there's that guy right there. Five. It's a bomb shelter. No, just the bomb. Does kind of. Oh. oh, hey. Power to ship is both sides 88. Generator switch here. Hmm. Okay. So, right now, no power to the ship. Uh, I can't get anything over here. Not yet. But it, that bit right there, 
the bit you can see through the window reminds me of episode six and the the generator room for the shield generator that is true I don't like the transition pieces. Bird! No butterflies. But at the same time... There's another marker. I can't turn that one on. It's too far away. Six. There's only like 144 company. Hey, there's another one. Yep, so mark that one down as well. A seven. That one I can turn on. You can go inside. So that's a boiler. What's kind of funny is uh, the original time they made this game, because, like I said, it was on a Speed 1 CD. The audio had to be compressed so far that they actually figured out that having something sounding like it was burning wasn't actually sounding like it was burning. That is true. What they had to do is run over gravel and then play that through the low feedback loop and then it sounded like something was burning. That's kind of funny. You can get the, should get the code eventually. I can code that. Something's going to be involving this boiler down the road. The island of mist. That's as big as they are able to fit onto a single yeah, <laughs> area of CD ROM to make it work that. effectively. There's a spaceship over there. Yeah. This is the island. Oh, there's another one. Power to it. This, my friends, the island of mist. Yep. Where I need to find unread pages. Bring me the red pages. So what's funny is this was very much so an indie project. They used to only make these games for Macs back, you know, way back when. And so when they finally made this game, then it got ported to everything. Like you could play this game on a PS1 if you wanted to. Yeah, I've seen the PS1 version. Crusaders. But uh, because this game, before it became you know, such a big, popular thing, they they had such low funds, they actually had... I don't think Tony won this game, he won this game. Um, they actually had to use themselves for actors. And so, Rand and Robin Miller, the, brother, the Miller brothers, they actually are the two brothers that are stuck in the books. They need three pages. Alright, all of them... Oh wait, no. Now. All of them are lit up. I doubt if that did anything. A lot of this game is just click. What does this do? Click. Does this, do? does this do anything? Does this have an effect on the world? Yeah. For, for sake of brevity of the game, I will tell you that there are books to read in the library. And also, you can go back to that atrium to get the message that we forget. Oh, we found all five, six, seven, eight. Also, moving around the island goes a little bit quicker if you've got free roam. I agree. We might want to switch to free roam. Can we do that? Uh huh. How do we do that? Or 
more quit. Whoops. You saw nothing. Well, there you go, guys. That's the game. <laughs> dead or maybe everyone is dead so I get for playing with boiler luckily it has an auto save feature unlike the original game clicking to try and move <laughs> I have called this age channel wood and it is a very different world Though it is exactly how I imagined it, it is still amazing to see it with my own eyes. Water covers this age as far as I can see, except for a small, rocky island. Elsewhere, there are only trees, which grows directly out of the water. A myriad of thin wooden passageways are built just above the water and disappear into the forest. I assume they were built some time ago, for they appear aged. I am eager to discover more about this land and its people, but I have arrived here late, and I must rest. I was awakened this morning by strange noises coming from a pathway adjacent to the one on which I had slept. I saw a group of monkey-like people heading in my direction. They had not seen me yet. I did not feel threatened by their presence. Their response to me was one that I would have never expected. After staring at me, for a short time, they fell to their knees and again to, and began what appeared to be some sort of ceremonial worship. I tried to speak to them, but they did not understand my language. Instead, they indicated through enthusiastic hand motions that I was to follow them. And thus he died to cannibals. It does sound like something that would happen to cannibals. Oh look, it's good food. Come, come. Come food. Come. <laughs> Thank you, God, for sending us good food. <laughs> As we walked, I began to notice that the waters below us were changing colors. Ah, oh, they roofied him. <laughs> Slowly, subtly, they would change from deep blue to a muddy orange, then from muddy orange to beautifully clear. I was so intrigued by the water, I hardly noticed that we had arrived at the latter. Climbing the latter led us to the village, which is about ten meters above the water, and could only be reached by rope ladders that stretched from the lower paths to the village level, approximately halfway up the grand trees. It is very interesting watching these people carry out their daily tasks. Even after watching them for hours, I did not understand exactly what they were doing. At sunset, they motioned for me to follow them. I followed the creatures to the doorway of the enormous hut. Strangely, once inside, I found that the hut appeared even larger than it had from the outside. The walls were garnished with bright metals, and in the center of the hut sat the leader of these people. At least he appeared to be the leader, for he sat a meter off the floor, he quoted. It's kind of cool, just, or even my monkey person. Um, <clears throat> on a thick throne. Guards surrounded the strong creature who was dressed in many exotic, colorful fabrics. Next to the le leader sat a very old human. At least to my extent, he appears human. His hair, which is only on his head and on his face and head, was completely gray, almost white, and hung very long around his frail body. His thin head hung limply by an almost grotesque neck that could not hold its head up to look at me. But what a surprise, this creature could speak my language. Shortly thereafter, I was given a bed with some hand motions that looked to be telling me to go to... So the bed was giving him hand motions, or they hand motioned him to a bed? I think they hand motioned him to a bed. Okay. And telling me to go to sleep. I looked forward to learning more. As I suspected, the ancient creature is a human. But he is old beyond his own reckoning and seems almost insane. However, the tree dwellers almost revere him as a god. They are treating me now in the same fashion, which makes me feel very uncomfortable. It is almost impossible to understand this old man. His voice is feeble, but wild. He has adopted much of the language of the tree dwellers. He himself told me he had not spoken our own tongue in ages. He attempted to explain to me the history of this place, the following is my best translation of what he has told me. Because it's all pictured now. I want you, you, you could read the crazy guy. 
You're the crazy guy now. Should I just go with normal voice or should I go with the old man crazy voice? You should do old man crazy voice. Many years ago, the Trumans and Tree Dollars lived together in this place, which was then a vast island. They interacted very little. The humans dwelt on the ground and the Tree Dollars lived high above the humans. Occasionally, the island was disturbed by mysterious rumblings, which happened randomly. Some sort of tectonic or volcanic action, I suspect. The sometimes slight, sometimes heavy trumors would only last a short time. Then they would stop, allowing everything to return to normal. One day, things changed. The Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> the rumbling began and grew quickly to unprecedented levels. Yeah, sounds like they're Fire Nation. Soon it became apparent that the entire island was slowly sinking into the ocean around them. Many humans died that day, much like the waterbenders. <laughs> but not before sacrificing themselves in order to stop the sinking of the island. The humans who lived through this catastrophe moved into the trees, where they gradually were weeded out. <laughs> died out. Died out. They don't, I don't think they got weeded out. Food. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because they are unequipped for such an environment, but I'm not too sure. This is the story the old... Oh. Uh, this is the story the old man communicated to me. Although many details are very unclear in my mind. Who is the Moon. Fire Nation? Who is the Water Nation? Spirits. <laughs> Moon Spirits. Ding and Yang. <laughs> Aang, you know, Aang already died. We're good. He's old now. We're now in Korra. We're now in, um, yeah. Uh, this is a story the old man communicated to me. Although many details are very unclear in my mind, I am especially confused as to how the humans saved the island from completely sinking. In fact, I doubt the accuracy of that part of, of the story. The island must have just stopped on its own. Yet the old man believes in the truth of the story, as if he had been there. And the tree dwellers do worship him, and apparently all humans, as if crossed out he, they were heroes or gods. Why did I cross out he? Apparently I misspelled something. And it is easier just to cross it out than the syntax. The old man ended our conversation today with an event which I will never forget. He began gripping my hands tightly, murmuring something about rest and asleep. He then said, We had expected you to come sooner. My hand feels weird now, just say. <laughs> These actions filled me a sort with immediate dread. <sighs> Have you washed your hands from flinging poop? What soap? <laughs> with much effort, he stood to his feet. I tried to help him, but he pushed me angrily away. With more force than I imagined his ah, frail body contained. The cocaine. <laughs> the tree dwellers quietly surrounded him with very solemn faces. They then kneeled slowly before him and ate his elbows. He walked to each and placed his hand on their heads. All the while, he murmured words which I did not understand. Do you want to... no money. Finally, he turned to me and smiled. Then he closed his eyes and walked to the door and off of the narrow path, high in the trees. The tree dwellers were silent. They began a procession down the nearest rope ladder, and as I followed them descending, I saw several of them pick up the body. He had fallen onto a lower level of the walkway, and I don't know why we put that in parentheses as part of the sentence, and carry it away. He was laying down at the at dead end of a short pier-like structure. With the use of some potion, one of the tree creatures lit the pier on fire, and I watched as the flames engulfed him. Jumped to his death. He's like, shinga mega shinga shang, goodbye. Well, he was living for a very long life. He could barely keep his head up. That's true. Has this strange... If that, if that was a dog, it probably would have been put down a couple years ago. Yeah, it would have been put down very much. It's like, bye, Susie. Loved you, girl. Get you. Yeah. Sad. Sad day. Yeah. Give me more Fanta, please. <sighs> this, doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't go away with the, the, the tears. No, it doesn't. Maybe I can drown out the voices, though. Uh, I think the bu uh, there's not enough bubbles for that. Bubbly. Um, as the strange <laughs> funeral proceeded, the waters around the pier changed to dull green. 
This morning I awoke, which is a good thing to awake in the morning. Finding it hard to even believe the previous evening's events, the water now is a dull green for as far as I can see now. For some reason, the water no longer shifts color. Maybe because we burned an old man and dropped him into it. Luke. As I wander throughout the pathways, the creatures watch me, curious to see what I will do next. They are constantly offering me strange objects of affection. Don't touch me that. I even found food outside the doorway to the room in which I had slept. This is a unique race of beings. I hope to learn their language soon, so that way I may learn from them. I ran out of black ink, but it's okay. I have blue. I have lived... Or is this another person? I think it's still him. Okay. I have lived on this world for three months, off and on, and the tree dwellers have shown great hospitality. I am even beginning to learn bits of their language. I have decided to return home for an extended stay with my loving wife and my sons, and hopefully return with them. However, I am sure Catherine will once again refuse. Serious snack. I think this age would be a wonderful experience for them all, and I at least look forward to how Cyrus and Akinar will react to its curious inhabitants. Well, uh, we'll figure out how they now react I, to them. Yeah. Now I ran out of blue, but it's alright, I have green! I think he's got one of those like four colored pens, and he's just switching between the different Could be. at this point. Could be. They, they were pretty popular at that time. I remember as a kid, I really wanted one. Was that before or after light-up sneakers? I never wanted light-up sneakers. No? Yeah. I wanted to be sneaky at night. Uh, instead of like, oh, great, now everyone knows where I am. I played a lot of night games when I was a kid. Anyways, Catherine is staying behind, as expected. My sons have returned with me, and they enjoy the same. old Victorian era. Yep. <laughs> you can make about that. Yeah. <laughs> they returned with me. Now you have to poop in that hole, study. <laughs> Welcome to the glorious age of poop hole. No, no, no. Channelwood. Channelwood. My sons have returned with me, and they enjoy this age very much. They get along very well with the tree dwellers, and are picking up their language surprisingly fast. I have no doubt that it will not be too long until they can speak with the tree dwellers much better than myself. Back to the blue pen. Click. I'm leaving tomorrow. Wait, no, sorry. Blue pen. Thank you. Effect, really nice sound effect. To check on Osmoian age. Osmoian. Sure. Osmoian. Osmosis. Osmosis. Cyrus has suggested, suggested, Cyrus Sirius has suggested that I allow him and his brother to stay, though the idea does unsettle me. I know that the boys are growing up rapidly. The hospitality of these creatures is such that I could think of no better place to leave them alone for a short while, so I will consent to their request. I warn the boys not to take advantage of the respect the tree dwellers have for their ideas. They seem to understand my warning, and I have faith that they will follow it. Much to my dismay, upon arriving in Everdunes, I learned that Pran and her people were continuing to be menaced by the Chachotic. Sure. Chochtik. Chocolate. They're being menaced by the chocolate. I fear for their survival and plan on returning to her shortly after checking on Cyrus and Akinar here. See Everdoon's journal for more information because I write this into my journals like they're, you know, textbooks. After watching Cyrus and Akinar, I see they are handling things very well and I think I can put to rest any fears about leaving them in Channelwood again. And... Did I skip too far? Nope, channel mode again. Switch ink. And for a little longer time. The tree dwellers seem slightly distressed that I am leaving, but are happy that Cyrus and Akinar are staying behind again. Look at all the colors I have on my pen. I want to know why that it's a different color at the very top of the page. I think it was a mess up. Eh. Must have been for the retro game, though. Yep. The tree dwellers seem slightly distressed that I am leaving, but are happy that Cyrus and Akinar are staying behind again. You know, since the last human they know jumped off a cliff and died. Not a cliff, just a bridge. I have been gone for over three days, and have been to many different places. I had to tell Cyrus and Akinar about Pran's death today. 
and they were visibly shaken, although they only remember her from their childhood. Catherine has suggested that it would be wise for Cyrus and Akinar to leave Channelwood for a while. Because she misses her sons. And I have to agree. They will be returning with me when I leave again. I just punched the microphone. I have told my sons that they will soon that they will be returning with me in two days. They spent the entire night telling me of an adventure they experienced in my absence. And it was rather remarkable. It seems they constructed a boat with the creature and, and traveled some ways out into the surrounding waters. I enjoy hearing them talk excitedly of their adventures, and am reminded of my own adventures as I was a child once, upon a time, and not old and with a beard. Well, his childhood was very strange. Yeah, don't doubt it. Look at how his older life is. Mm. He's taken all in stride. Such a good man. Yeah. I finally understand why the tree dwellers have been giving me their mini inks and insisting I write with them. Looking through some of my past entries, I see now that the inks have changed from the black I thought they were to various different colors. Uh, that explains the very random color at the very top of the pen. I have shown some of the creatures my journal, and they laughed and howled. I did not know that they had such a sense of humor. Even now, as I look through this very colorful journal, I cannot help but chuckle myself. Chuckle, 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 chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> we will be returning tomorrow, as my sons are with... Oh, wait. We will be returning tomorrow, as my sons are with the creatures for the last night here. They have told me they would like to come to Channelwood again, and also asked if they can visit some other ages alone though I will have to think over that request. I believe they have proven to me that they are trustworthy and responsible. Catherine will also have to help me decide whether they are ready for travel alone, for now I must give my farewells to the creatures, for I do not know how long it will be until I visit this age again. All right, so that's a drawing of channel wood, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, rough setup. And then there's a windmill and a building, and now we're gone. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll end this episode here. And the next episode, we'll go back to that atrium and see what the message is.